Hello everyone, how are you doing? This is MD Tech here with another quick tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to enable or disable the always prompt for password upon a remote desktop connection on your Windows computer. So usually when you get a little pop-up, you know, when you're trying to connect to a remote desktop, it might say your credentials did not work. The server's authentication policy does not allow connection requests using saved credentials. Please enter new credentials. So if you want to go ahead and get rid of that prompt or enable it for whatever reason, in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to do that. And without further ado, let's go ahead and jump straight into it. So we are going to start off by opening up the search menu. Assuming you're on Windows 10 or 11 professional or higher edition, like education or enterprise or professional, like I said, type in GP edit. Best results should come back with edit group policy. Go ahead and open that up. And now you want to locate underneath computer configuration on the left side. You want to double click on the respective administrative templates folder that's underneath of it. So double click on it. Locate the Windows Components folder and double click on that one as well. And now there should be a Remote Desktop Services folder. And go ahead and double click on that. And finally, locate something that says Remote Desktop Session Host. So you could double click on it down here or you could have double clicked on it over on the right side as well. And finally, you want to locate something that says Security. Just left click on that. On the right side, locate where it says always prompt for password upon connection. Double click on it. So if you want to set it to enabled, so if you want to always prompt for password upon connection, you would enable that. Otherwise, you would disable that option, depending on your preference. And then you would select apply and OK. You would need to restart your computer for the changes to take effect. So we went ahead and actually restarted our computer here. And that should be about it. If you're running Windows 10 or Windows 11 Home Edition, you're going to have to go through the Registry Editor. So in order to do that, you can open up the search menu, type in RegEdit, R-E-G-E-D-I-T. Best match, go back to Registry Editor. Go ahead and right-click on that and select Run as Administrator. If you receive a user account control prompt, select Yes. And before you proceed in the registry, I would suggest you create a backup of it. So if anything were to go wrong, you could easily restore it back. And in order to create a backup, all you have to do is select File and then Export. File name, I recommend naming it the date in which you're making the backup. Set Export Range to All and then save it to a convenient and easily accessible location on your computer. And if you ever needed to import back in from the backup, all you have to do is select File and then Import and then navigate to the file location. And now we're ready to begin. So we're going to start by double clicking on the HK Local Machine folder. Do the same thing now for the software folder. Same thing for policies. Same thing for Microsoft. There should be a Windows NT folder in here. Double click on that. And finally, there should be a Terminal Services folder. Just left click on that one time. If you need to take note of our file path, it's up at the top of the screen here. Each backslash is a different sub key we've gone under to get to this point. If for some reason you don't see any of these keys, perhaps you might have to right click on the key above it and select new and then key. And then just for example, if you're missing the terminal services folder, you would right click on the Windows NT folder, select new key, and then you would call terminal services, for example. So anyway, since we've selected terminal services here, on the right side, there's a value in here. It says F prompt for password. You'd have to create one if you had to go through the registry here, or maybe you already had it in here, in which case you just double click on it. So one would enable this prompting for password and zero would disable the prompting for password. The reason this D word value is in here anyway is because we went through the group policy editor and modified the registry. We are kind of have to go through doing this without the group policy editor, so that's why we have to go through the registry if you're on Windows 10 or Windows 11 Home Edition, unfortunately, which does not include the group policy editor, at least natively, uh, but that's a tutorial for another day. But anyway, one would enable prompting for password and zero would disable that. If you had to create this D-word value from scratch, you would just right-click in a blank area over on the right, 
select new and then dword 32 bit value name it f prompt for password exactly how you see it on my screen that's a lowercase f out front i know it might be a little hard to see i'll try and zoom in uh in the video and you would double click on this value like i said and then you would set it either to zero or one depending on your preference and then once you know what that you go ahead and close out of everything and you would need to restart your computer for the change to take effect And hopefully that should have been about it. So as always, thank you guys for watching this brief tutorial. I do hope I was able to help you out, and I do look forward to catching you all in the next tutorial. Goodbye.